informative as possible. We're now going to look at the, the CAM light module. Um, once again, this is another light package that's come out with Wi-Fi 4M060. So CAM light, as I say, is a fully associative member of PTC's manufacturing family of products. It provides a unique approach to generating NC programs for the machining of automatic parts. It's a true solid modeling, sorry, true solid machining module. And it uses information contained in the solid model and combines it with the shop floor machining fundamentals to reduce programming time and increase program efficiency. It's a feature-based CAM system for two and a half axis milling and four and a half axis positioning. And just as ProEngineer is a feature-based modeling system, CAM Lite is a feature-based machining system. So features used to design and create a model, not really applicable to machining the parts. Cam Light provides a suite of machining specific features that are not only dictated by the <coughs> sorry. Cam Light provides a suite of machining specific features that are not dictated by the designer of the parts, but by the NC programmer. It uses shop floor terminology such as pocket, slot, chamfer, and O-ring. It captures and reuses the standard machining methods and enables you to automate them with the use of templates. The interface is extremely easy to use, as it's all icon and dialog driven should shorten your learning curve. Once the toolpath has been generated, CamLight will output a generic CL file, uh, which can then be post-processed. Okay, so once again, we're going to go into a little showcase on this. Um, and once again, it is a video, um, again, to cut down on time lag, and, and let's just move along swiftly. So I'm just going to load this up for you. So the workflow of CamLight closely tracks what happens on the shop floor. We generate an NC model, which is essentially an assembly that contains the design model and the workpiece model as well. We then have to set up a machining environment, which defines the, what machine to use, or at least what class of machine. And then further information can be entered in areas such as cutting tools, feeds, travel, etc. All that information can be defined. We then define the program zero, where the part is held in space. Once this information is known, we can begin to select areas on the model and then break the geometry down into smaller, recognizable, and easy to manage shapes, uh, which better lend themselves to more efficient machining. These shapes are referred to on the shop floor and in cam light as pockets, slots, faces, holes, that kind of thing. And these names become the labels for cam light's machining features, which appear in the feature browser, which is shown on the left side of the screen. And these features contain all of the information required to completely machine them. What you can see on screen is the process of defining these features for various areas of the model, such as pockets, channels, um, face operations. I'll just jump forward here in time to cut down on what you're seeing, and you will see me do the same thing over and over again. So with the feature definition complete, we can start to create the toolpath. So we do this by selecting the feature and using the right-hand mouse button, so it's very easy to use. We can then set all kinds of machining parameters in the feature dialog to determine things like roughing or finishing, cut motion, tool being used, cut angle, and so on. We can then verify this by animating the tool to see if our inputs are correct. So we have the ability to speed up or slow down the playback. We can get a lot of results back from this. When complete, the stock model should update to show the completed operation. And then you can perform a similar process for each, of the sorry, for each of the remaining features on your job. Each feature will have parameters which are essential to reproduce the shop floor accepted methods of creation that it requires. So you can see that happening here with all the various options that we've got. And all the while it updates the stock model to show an accurate representation of your progress. If you've established methods for creating the toolpath, such as drilling holes, roughing, finishing a pocket, for example, you can save these parameters in a template and apply them to different features or even different jobs. So what you can see happening on screen here is the actual manual creation of a toolpath, if you like. It's a very similar process, see selecting the feature here on screen, picking up a pre-saved template, and then just applying that to the features.
So once again, I've skipped forward in time to keep the showcase as concise as possible for you. I bypassed the remaining roughing operations. And what we're seeing now is the uh, reselection of a feature to apply perhaps a second operation or a third or whatever. In this case, we're applying a finish on here. You can see that update in the stock model again. Once again, picking up a different one this time, perhaps a channel, applying a finishing operation to that too, and then so on. So now that I've finished machining or generating the toolpath for my features, I can, can, <coughs> I can consolidate all of the paths and output my CL data ready to post-process. So we can see that take place here at the moment. As I said before, it generates a generic CL file. Once we've got this information in the toolpath, we can feed this into a product called Vericut. Vericut is a powerful material removal simulation piece of software. It comes with CamLite. It's completely integrated with CamLite. And it provides users with high quality material removal simulation in a viewer kind of way. And there we go. So if we return from the video on here, we'll just go into the summary page. Well, in summary, it's a feature-based CAN system for two and a half axis milling, four and a half axis positioning. It's available right now with Wildfire 4 M060. It uses standard tool uh, terms to define geometry on the part. It's feature-based, so it's very easy to use. The dialogue is incredibly interactive. It's icon and dialogue driven, and it generates a